Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Today, we're going to talk about synthetic biology and bioinformatics. Um, these are two career paths that are really beneficial to learn about. Uh, I didn't know anything about them when I went here at Saddleback, and uh, I wish I had known a little more about them. Um, so first off, we are from a competition called IGEM. It stands for International Genetically Engineered Machine. It's an international competition that takes teams from all over the world to work on projects that will advance the field of synthetic biology. Uh, it started in 2004 with only five teams, but recent years have seen up to over 300 teams from the high school level all the way to the graduate level, proving that research in this field is accessible to less experienced students. So what makes biology synthetic? Synthetic biology is the redesigning of organisms for useful purposes by engineering them to have new abilities and functions. These modifications have useful applications in solving problems in various fields such as medicine, agriculture, and industry. So what can you do? The essence of synthetic biology involves taking existing organisms with certain functions and modifying them to produce something new or improved. You can redesign systems that already exist in nature and optimize them for efficiency or even create something, create new biological parts, devices, and systems that can then be introduced into other organisms to achieve a desired goal. So with this information, how do you pick a project? Well, first, you have to identify a problem. In any biological field, one of the best ways to identify a problem is to immerse yourself in the literature to find the issues in that field. It can be difficult to know what problems are feasible to solve unless you are aware of the current state of the landscape. What issues could be solved? What is other research lacking? How can an existing system be improved or changed for a new application? These questions are essential to keep in mind when hunting for a project. So once you have narrowed down an idea for a project, iGEM encourages that, that your procedure follows the engineering design cycle. Research, imagine, design, build, test, learn, improve, and continue research. This ensures that you have completed a comprehensive thought process, as well as identified ways of improvement for the future. So now we'd like to show you some examples of some cool sy synthetic biology projects that from teams that we've had the pleasure of collaborating with this year. UC Santa Cruz. This year, Santa Cruz is working on developing biodegradable elastic plant bed sheets made from cellulose produced from a bacterium. In the agricultural industry, the usual non-biodegradable sheets, which you can see in the upper left picture, which span across agricultural fields, create an enormous amount of plastic waste that has the potential to be circumvented by this project. Pretty neat. We've also had the pleasure of working with Stanford. And now, and they've sent us their promotional video, which is another requirement of iGEM, which we'd like to show you guys. Imagine this, you're at home and your family member feels sick. You get a sample, grab a culture of cells and see if your test glows. You can even grow up another culture and do it again the next day. It is simple to use and doesn't require any in vitro biochemistry or expensive hardware. How does this work? Our team set out to engineer Bacillus subtilis, which naturally takes up nucleic acids from the environment to search for any sequence you specify. If it finds the sequence, it produces a response of your design. This is a self-replicating test kit powered by sugar, water, and air. It is capable of being distributed around the globe and is adaptable for many purposes. Our design is called SEED, Self-Replicating Environmentally Embedded Diagnostic. With SEED, everyone everywhere can get tested quickly, cheaply, easily. The third team that we collaborated with was actually a team from 2018 um, called Epinoma. And what Epinoma did was they developed improvements on a cancer diagnostic method called liquid biopsy. Liquid biopsy essentially looks in patients' blood for signs of cancer in the DNA. Um, but what they were able to do using machine learning is create probes that looked not only at the DNA, but also the epigenetics, so the changes in the methylation of the DNA. Um, they did well in 2018 and are now a startup company. Um, and we've interviewed the owner, Varun Govel. He's a really interesting guy. And uh, I have the link if you would like uh, to see that. You can reach out to me. I'll provide my email. 
Um, so let's talk about bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is a rapidly growing field that combines computer science and biology. Uh, many biologists get intimidated when they hear about it, but hopefully as we describe our project design to you, we can alleviate some of that concern that you might have. Um, for people that have no coding experience at all, you're not alone. I had personally never coded before March this year, but it only took a few beginner YouTube, uh, YouTube tutorials in a coding language called Python before I was able to understand how it would be useful in biology. With this in mind, bioinformaticians make about 80,000 to 130,000 annually, according to Glassdoor. Um, I personally applied to two genetics internships at Davis, and in both interviews, I was asked if I was able to code. These weren't bioinformatics jobs that I was applying for, these were genetics internships. Um, so in short, this is definitely something useful to learn. And I wish I'd known more about it when I was here. Um, and that leads me to what it is we're doing. Our iGEM project is called SporeCore because we're using bioinformatics, hence the word core, to study fungi, hence spore. In the next few slides, we will describe our project so that you can get a feel for how in-depth undergraduate research can be, and hopefully you'll be encouraged by it as well. Okay, so SporeCore, that's us. I'm going to go ahead and play our promotional video for you. This year, Team Sporecore from the University of California, Davis, have been exploring the world of filamentous fungi, but digitally with bioinformatics. Our goal this summer is to help create an arsenal of new genetic parts to study fungi. Filamentous fungi can produce important bioactive compounds such as toxins and antibiotics, and make up to 50% of the world's market for industrial enzymes. Currently, the library of parts derived from filamentous fungi is very limited. Popular genetic databases such as TransFact lack data on the binding sites for these unique gene clusters that code for important fungal compounds. In the past 10 years, only 10% of iGEM teams have worked with fungi, and only 1.3% of projects involve filamentous fungi. This is where Team SporeCore comes in. Equipped with motif finding software, custom bioinformatics tools, and 664 genomes provided by the Joint Genome Institute, we are looking for transcription factor binding sites that will improve the discovery of these unique bioactive compounds. This will expand the fungal genetic toolkit for synthetic biologists and will create a computational pipeline that allows others to follow in our footsteps. Our methods for discovering binding motifs allows us to process thousands of promoters from different species. We aim to create a library of filamentous fungi derived parts for future research and synthetic biology applications. If you'd like to learn more about our project, feel free to check out our wiki at Team UC Davis. That's all we have time for now. So we hope to see you at the Giant Jamboree this year. This is SporeCore signing off. Okay, so to clear a few things up, um, when we say we're making new genetic parts, we're talking about functional segments of DNA like binding sites. Uh, using genetic techniques, we can remove these parts or we can get them synthesized by a larger company and we can store them in bacterial vector genomes. This can all be done quite simply, and if it's done with new binding sites, then researchers everywhere will have more tools available to study fungi. Um, when we mention our computational pipeline, we're talking about the bioinformatics design. Basically, we found a motif finding software, which looks in genomes for a nucleotide pattern that likely represents a binding site. Uh, we feed this software a specific file called a FASTA file, which is a genome region or uh, a whole genome written out. Um, once this file is fed in, the Motif software will spit out an output, which tells us a potential binding site and how significant it is. This takes a very long time to use if you have many genomes to, in to inspect and it's not very accurate in filamentous fungi. That's where our software comes in. It automates this feeding process and also provides the Motif software with more information so that it can more accurately locate binding sites. Um, once we have these binding sites, we can design genetic constructs or synthetic DNA strands for use in the lab. Um, so here is a demonstration of our software. I'm just going to run through it very quickly. Um, what you're seeing here in the upper right is the Mac terminal. Um, I was a Windows user up until March this year, so I had no idea this even existed. Um, but basically, you can type through this 
um, to access the files on your computer rather than going through and clicking on them. And you can also run um, a bunch of programs from this. So this is what we use to run our program. Uh, you'll see here there's a bunch of functions being written out into what's called a command line. Um, things like meme path and Jasper file are just specifying uh, certain things that our program can do. Uh, and now you see her running it. So basically this program is running through and it's finding um, a bunch of binding sites and their statistical significance. And here you see all the outputs that she's highlighting right here. Okay. So once we have the opportunity to get into lab, these are the guidelines that we would follow. When choosing an organism, safety is always a concern that should be kept in mind when working in lab. When choosing our fungal organism of interest, we needed to make sure we were not choosing something that would pose health risks to our colleagues or the environment. Since a lot of the organismal machinery that we needed was in the Aspergillus clade, a common fungal pathogen group, we needed to make sure we were using a biosafety level one out of four rated strain. And after lots of digging, we chose Aspergillus niger. Now that we've chosen our organism, we needed to design the DNA. In order to make the most out of our organism, we needed to design a construct that works well with our host organism that can still produce results efficiently. After countless papers, we found specific selective genes and promoters that should be able to properly express our novel transcription factor binding sites. Having our DNA, then we needed to integrate it into the organism. Integrating genetic constructs is very easy in filamentous fungi because they do something called homologous recombination. This means if we design the ends of our genetic constructs to match portions of the sequence in our filamentous fungi, the genome will take in our sequence without the need for any cutting enzymes. And if done correctly, the host organism will be ready to start producing our gene of interest. Once the gene is produced, we needed to be able to quantify it. So in our designer DNA, we plan to introduce a gene called green fluorescent protein, or GFP for short. This gene, if attached to our promoter, should create a green glow when binding of the transcription factor occurs. This will allow us to track production and at the same time quantify the level of expression. This ultimately would confirm that our proposed binding site is correct and functional. However, before we can quantify our expression, we must carry out a common protocol in order to amplify our DNA to a readable amount. We do this through PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. We have collaborated with a team from Moscow, Russia, and they have provided us with an example of in-lab PCR protocol, since we are unable to get into lab and demonstrate ourselves. And if you would like to see the whole video for how they carry out the protocol, we will have a link on our wiki that you can visit. Now we're gonna show a short portion of the video. Go ahead. Do you want to show the portion of the video? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go to like 30 seconds. Sorry about that, guys. So, so here you can see um, after the PCR has been replicated, or not, not replicated, but once the, um, the samples have been collected, they're pipetting um, primers, I believe, into, into wells that will then be used for PCR in order to amplify the DNA so that it can be, so it can be viewed. Um, and once all of their samples are loaded in, they run it through the PCR machine and then the DNA is amplified. All right. Okay. Yep, next slide. Now it's your turn. So with this insight we just gave, we hope that you see what is capable in these fields and we would encourage you to seek out undergraduate research. Bioinformatics is a great path to take right now, especially when lab access is slim and while in a community college especially, there is a lack of lab resources available. We would also encourage Saddleback as a whole to look into iGEM. The experience we've gained from this has been in invaluable and we've made many important connections with synthetic biology companies and esteemed professors. We cannot recommend it enough. And in the, if that's not enough to convince you, iGEM has recently announced on Twitter that next year's Jamboree will be held in Paris. Well, that's all from us, but we will gladly take any questions you might have. We'd now like to open the floor. 
Thank you so much.